Okay, here we go. So the first one, what do you do with these exponents? Add them. So when you add those, you should get x to the seventh. It didn't matter that there were two or three of them, but you add them up. Did you multiply, Christian? Okay, so add them up, and you'll get x to the seventh there. Here you're multiplying. So when you see the base every time you add them, when you only see the base once, power to a power, you multiply them. Whoops, not 8. How about x, the negative 8? And then did you guys remember to bring it down? Because I don't want a negative exponent at the end. Okay? Um, number 3 is just demonstrating you take the 4 to everything. So it's x to the 4th, or you can think of an x to the 1st here and then multiply it. So it's x to the 4th, y to what power? Negative 12. And then you need to leave the x to the 4th, move the y to the 12th down. Okay, are we good? Okay, number 4. Um, this will do one at a time. They're a little bit trickier. So 2a over 3b to the 4th. Oh, you know what? Let's change this. Can you make that 3 a 6 instead? 6, and let's go squared. There you go. Okay, you should have 2 squared, which you can write 2 squared and take another step, or just write 4 is fine. A to what power? A to second. What's on the bottom? 12. Whoops, 6 squared is? 36. B to the 8. Okay, so reducing. You can divide this by 4 and divide this by 4. So you just end up with 1A squared, which is just A squared. If you write the 1 there, it's fine. And then what do we have on the bottom? 9b to the 8th. Okay, so make sure after you raise up to the power, you have the 4 over 36 and reduce that fraction. Okay, all right, number 5. x to the negative 5th, y to the 4th, over x, <coughs> over x squared y. What's the first move? The big move here. Uh, move, <coughs> bring the negative down. Move this down. 
I want to emphasize on this one that you're not, when you move something down, you're not switching it with anything, right? It's just if something has an x exponent, you move it. This doesn't need to move, this doesn't need to move, this doesn't need to move. So there's no switching action. It's a moving it if it's a negative exponent. So I'm going to keep the y to the fourth on top. I'm going to move this one down, make it x to the fifth, and I'm also going to keep x squared and y down there. You guys with me? So the only one I moved was this one. All right, now I can do some stuff. What's x to the fifth times x to the second? X to the seventh. They're on the bottom. How many y's will cross off here? One. How many left over? Three. We're at, we're at top. So y cubed over x to the seventh. How many people got that one right? Okay, good. Okay, let's try another one. 3x over x to the 0, y to the negative 4th, raised to the negative 3rd. Can I go or do you need more time? Please try. I'm going to try to see what you're doing right wrong. So make an effort here. <coughs> Now, sometimes people might move this up first. I don't do that first because when I take it to the power, I might change the signs anyways. I might have to move back down like I would in this case. So I usually do the exponent out in front first, the negative 3 power. <coughs> so this is going to be 3 to the negative 3, x to the negative 3. What's x to the 0? 1. I mean, it times by 1 here. It doesn't do anything. So this essentially can be, you can just mark it off. You can go 0 times negative 3 and write it down again as x to the 0. But when you times the, anything by 1, it doesn't do anything. So you don't even have that. What do you have on the bottom? Y to the 12. Okay, so y to the 12 stays. 3 to the negative 3 moves down. And x to the negative 3 moves down. What's left on the top then? What's left on the top? 1. There's nothing there. So you have to put a 1. Okay, so now the bottom is 27x cubed y to the 12. Okay, I had to move this one down, and I had to move this one down. Jenna, question? But I can't times it until this is a positive. You can't even evaluate 3 to the negative third. That doesn't mean 3. Any, you got to make it a positive so you can actually evaluate it. So move it down. Okay? All right. Different type of problem. Let's see if you guys remember how to do these. Do you remember what we did with 16 to the 3 halves? So without a calculator. So I don't want you to type in 16 to the 3 halves. I want you to do it without a calculator. You are the human calculator. <coughs> right, Parker? Thank you. 
There's a root and there's a power in that fraction. Which part of the fraction is the root part? The, the bottom. bottom. The bottom. So that's a two root, so it's a one half power of square root. So you do that first and then you cube it. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to write out some different things just to show you what the three halves means. The three halves means 16 to the one half raised to the third. Multiply those, that's three halves. Or you could write it the square root of 16, which is the one half power, raised to the third. Okay? Either way, what is the square root of 16 or 16 to the 1 half? 4. And then you are raising it to the third power. And that is 64. Okay, now, what you have to show me. Some of you guys I know could go from here to here. Okay? But on a test or quiz, I need an in-between step so I know you didn't just type it in your calculator. There, are, there might be a time when I actually take your calculator away. But even if I had you have your calculator with you, you could show me you understand what the root and the power means if you will show me this step and this step. I don't care about this. It's up to you. If that helps you, it's great. It's not wrong to do it. It's really good. But if you know that you need to take the square root of 16 first and you write that down as 4 and then raise to the third power, that would be fine. Okay? All right. Try another one like this one. Um, let's do... How about 81 to the 3 fourths? Okay, thought process is the fourth root of 81 raised to the third power. The fourth root of 81 is what? 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 3 is 9, so 9, 9 is 81. So that's 3. 3 to the third power is 27. Minimum that you write for me is this and this. Okay? And if you can do it in your head, great. But you have to show me those two things. Okay? How many people got that one right? Okay, let me go a little harder then. So number 9. Let's say you have negative 343 to the two-thirds. Remember on any assignments, if you mess up, if you come in during access, you can always show them to me and talk about the mistakes, write them down. I'll give you points back. Oh, by the way, I will be here today, but only till 3.20 today. I have to go. But tomorrow, because it's in the quarter, we're not having a meeting. So a little extra time. If you want to come in tomorrow, you guys get out early. 
So if you need to redo a quiz or make up a quiz, or you want to get maybe just some things, figure out with me what you need to make up and maybe work some stuff over the weekend if you're behind. Over the weekend, I'm going to break. But anyway, I'll be here today till 3.20 and tomorrow for a couple hours because we're getting out early. Okay, let's see if you guys see this one correctly. Um, what was the twist on this one? The negative. Okay, so this is the cube root of negative 343 raised to the second, or if you'd rather write it, negative 343 to the one-third power, and then squared, those are the same thing. What multiplies three times itself to give you negative 343? Negative 7. So it has to be negative 7 squared, and that gives you 49. So what I'm looking for is this and this. So if you write down 7 squared and get 49, I'm not going to give you full credit <coughs> because the cube root of this isn't 7. It's negative 7, but you happen to get the right answer because when you square, you get the same thing. Also, if you write down this, that's not correct because without the parentheses, this would imply what? A negative 49, but it's negative 7 squared gives you 49. So I will ask you for those two steps. Okay? Yes? Like if you had an extra one here? Yeah. That's fine. It's just an extra you don't have to, but you can. Yep. Okay. Um, how many people got that one right? 49? And did you show me this in between her? Correctly? Okay. Last one for the warm up here. Is this 10? Yep. Wow. Okay. So another little twist on this one. So if this yellow quiz I'm passing back doesn't look familiar to you, then you probably missed it. I'm going to take it very good one, please. Otherwise, it's a zero, three, three, quarter. Okay. What's the twist on this one, the extra twist? The extra negative. The extra negative on the exponent. Okay, so first move, I would do this. 1 over negative 125 to the 2 thirds power. That's my first move. Okay? Then I'm going to go negative 125 cube root. Now, I can write this part down or not, but what multiplies five, 3 times itself to give you 125? 5. five and it would need to be a negative because 3 negatives multiplied is a negative. <laughs> so I need to see this step. I need to see negative 5 squared in parentheses and then 1 over. 25 is your final answer. Who got that one right? Nice. Okay. Alrighty. Um, I handed back papers, quiz, and jig. What'd you do? Out here, a negative 2. So then did you get negative 5 to the negative second, and then did you bring it down? Uh, you eventually have to bring it down. So if you brought it down here, then you have the same thing I have there. Yeah. Yeah, that would work. So what she's saying is she didn't bring it down until she dealt with this. And that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Good call. All righty. Let's take out the assignment from last time, the section 5-1. And did we get finished in class? Yeah. 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 Did anybody have to, did a few of you take it home or not?
Everybody finished, you think? Okay, so do I need to read off answers? No. no. Okay, so if you did take it home and you didn't get your answers checked, I have answers and you guys will have some work time today. You can ask me for the 5 one answers and check them, make sure you're doing them right. Okay, I don't want you guys to be turning in stuff that you don't know if it's right or wrong. Okay? Bridget? Was that like a worksheet? Yes. Were you, did you have to be here at school yesterday? Um, yes, I was. So make sure you come in the last day, okay? Okay. All righty. So we're ready to roll then. Okay. So notes and examples. So yes. So set your. Um, did I pass back the five one? Is that the one I already passed back? Yeah, to? you passed it back. Oh, so you turned in on my report. Yeah, I already recorded it. Okay. So I can look back there too. Okay. So on a clean sheet of notebook paper, keep the rule book separate. Um, doing notes. And this is called day five one, day two, or more five one. Yeah. And I need to tape. Yes, we're taping. Hello, Flip class. Does anybody want to give a shout out to your friends in Flip? Riley. Hey. hey. Did hey, you Riley. say that again? One A and one B. I have flipped oh, algebra two. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's show me each other. Yeah. I hate you. Uh, uh, what was that? <laughs> Christian wasn't being very nice. No, Michaela said she really said stupid stuff on that side. Oh, oh yeah. was that yeah, regarding that? was that regarding your video, or what? Uh, no. <laughs> I liked your video. It was fun. He's getting embarrassed. That was from Monticola, right? That was good. All right, here we go. This is more of section 5.1. And today's date is the 26th, so we're 3, 26, 19. Um, just a heads up, FYI, I will not be here on Thursday. So the substitute will be doing four main things, so I want you to know this. He's going to give you uh, this pink painting any worksheet up there, but it's going to be like our first quiz for this chapter, which will be after spring break. Okay? So you're going to do that in class, check in class. You might want to over break, kind of review it. Or, you know, I set a piece of paper on top and do it again. But make sure you leave here with them all done in practice. Um, he'll put the assignment because we probably won't have time to finish today in class. And then he's going to run the video for Section 5 and 2 for your notes. Okay? So if there happens to be any problem with the, with the computer system or anything like that, then what you're going to do is just pull out your own device and you're going to watch the notes on section 5.2. You won't pull that out if he if he has it running. So what I would ask you to do on Thursday, if you don't usually bring your Chromebook with you, if you would, if you don't care to use my headphones, because I have headphones under the table, but if you're kind of a germ freak, maybe have some headphones with you too. Okay? So that's what we'll do as far as notes should be up here, but if it doesn't, if it fails, then we're going to watch the video um, separately and then do the, then I have the worksheet again on 5.2 for you. Okay, and you should be able to get close to done if you go after it. Maybe not quite done. Okay, but pretty close. Okay, any questions as far as Thursday? Okay, and then what you turn in Thursday, which will be today's assignment, will still go on this quarter grade. So I'll be back Friday to do grades. Okay. All right, here we go. So we're going to only learn two new things today. Uh, but there's different. You know, they get harder and harder. All that. So there's a few examples. But only two types, so that's kind of nice. Mm -hmm. So solving equations using <laughs> roots. Okay, now notice I didn't say square roots. Because now we have cube roots, fourth roots, different powers of roots. Okay? But initially the problem is going to work out the same as it did before. So let's say we have example number one here. Let's say I have um, 2x squared minus 18 equals 0. What method would you use to solve that? Square. square root method, which means you have to get x squared by itself. So what do we do? Move over to 18, divide by 2, and then what do we do to both sides? Take the square root. Take the square root of an x squared gives you what? Take the square root of 9 gives you plus or minus 3. Now, when you have, when you put the plus or minus, the square root on there, you have to put plus or minus because the square root symbol itself, by definition, implies only the positive. But it's when you're physically taking the square root, you have to say, oh, I need both answers because I know that negative 3 times negative 3 is also positive 9. Okay? All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to extend this 
to problems that maybe aren't squares. So 4x to the fifth equals 128. What do you think you would do first? Divide by 4. We want to get the, the x to the power by itself. Okay, can you guys divide by 4 without a calculator? You know a quick way to do that? Divide by 2. Divide by 2 again. So what's half of 128? 64. What's half of 64? 32. You've just divided by 4. Okay? Okay, now what I'd like you to do, and you don't have to do this on your assignments, but I'd like you to write down that step again because I want you to have to see what we do new on this and not have written over it. Okay? So what we're going to do at this point is instead of taking the square root, we're going to do what? <coughs> Take the fifth root. So it's a little 5 here and a little 5 here. So this says what multiplies 5 times itself to give you x to the fifth? 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 32, not x to the fifth. So you answer the question, but not the question I asked you. What multiplies 5 times itself to give you x to the fifth? X. Now, Parker, what's the key root of 32? 2. Because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 32. Now, another way to write this. So would you on the side, would you write this down yet one more time? So you have any notes to, to refer to. Another way to write the fifth root is to raise it to what power? One-fifth. That's what we did last time, right? Rational form and radical form. When you write one-fifth power, that's called rational form. What is five times a fifth? One. That's why this is x to the first. And then 32 to the one-fifth is still how many takes five twos to get you to 32. Okay? But I think it's important for you to see the different forms, how this form says... What multiplies 5 times itself to give you x to the fifth? This form says, oh, let's just power to a power it, and we get x to the first. Okay? So instead of taking the square root, you're going to be doing different roots today. Um, when, will you, when will you have two answers? When will you get the plus or minus? When, the square root. when it's what type of number? An even number. Because on an even power, if you take a negative an even amount of times, it still gets you the positive. But an odd... An odd, if it's a third power, if it's positive, it's positive. If it's negative, it's negative. So you don't get two answers out on the thirds or fifths or anything like that. Okay? Okay, let me show you another type. Do you remember the ones when we were doing square roots where we had something in the parentheses? So instead of having a square root today, we might have a fourth power. Okay? Would you write that down again for me, please, so that we can write on it? And so you see the original problem. Okay, how are we going to get rid of the fourth power? Do what? There's two options. How get how to get rid of the fourth power? We either do this or we do this. Take the fourth root or raise the one fourth power. They mean to do the same thing, just the notation is radical form here, right? and rational form here. Okay, last time what did we do? We did the root, the radical. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to raise this to the one-fourth. I'm going to raise this to the one-fourth. Okay, what does this do on the left side then? Multiply those, so that just gives us to the first power. That was our goal. Over here, you can leave it 21 to the one-fourth or you can write it the fourth root of 21. I tend to write it like that more often. Which one is easier for you to type in the calculator? The fourth root. Fourth root? Okay. Then what do we have to do? Plus three. Okay, now I have forgotten something. What have I forgotten? Plus or minus. Plus or minus. When I take the fourth root of this, a negative number would also give me that number. Negative times a negative times a negative. By the way, the fourth root of 21 just by itself is, let's see, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is how much? Try again. 16. And what's 3 times 3 times 3 times 3? So 9 times 9 is 81. Sometimes on fourth powers it's nice to group them up like that. So where does 21 fall in here? Closer to 2, right? Okay, would everybody type in just the 4th root of 21? Not with the 3 at all, just the 4th root of 21. 
2.14. So what I get is, and this should be a plus or minus 3, plus or minus, what would you say again? 2.14. You guys with me? Okay, so now we would have to take 3 plus that number, so that's 5.14, or 3 minus it. What's the other value? It won't be a negative. It's 3 minus 2 something isn't a negative. Just 0.86. Okay, so remember at the end, don't write down plus or minus a 5.14. It's this part that was plus or minus, and you have to go 3 plus that, 3 minus that, like we used to do. Okay, so do you see how it's close to what we did before? It's just a fourth root instead of a square root on this one. Okay, I want you guys to try this one. What number are we on? Four? Okay. Four. Okay, so you guys try this one, please. X squared minus 10 equals negative 74. What's the first move? Add the 10. Hey, Ryan, what's up? Oh. We will be working in about probably 10, 15 minutes if you want to help. That'd be great. Okay. Um, oh, did I do squared there? I didn't want to do squared. What a weenie. That was easy peasy. Okay, can everybody fix it? We'll just do it together. Shoot. I meant to a third power. Oh, by the way, when you got to this, what is the answer? Ah, good job. It's it's a imaginary, right? Okay, what I meant was the cube. So somewhere get to that step. And now we got a cube root both sides. So cube root this side, cube root this side. So what number multiple? Uh oh. Over here? Yeah. The square root sixty four is eight. Uh oh. I was wrong. Okay. Okay, what's the cube root of negative 64? What multiplies 4 times itself to give you 64? Or excuse me, 3 times itself. Okay, let's work on cubes. Well, you guys probably need to write this down then. What's 1 cubed? 1. What's 2 cubed? 8. What's 3 cubed? What's 3 times 3 times 3? 27. These are good numbers to know. Cubes. What's 4 times 4 times 4? There's our number. Okay, so now we want the cube root of negative 64. What's it going to be? Negative, negative 4. Because negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4 is a negative 64. Okay? <coughs> All right, I won't ask you who got that one because I have the problem written down wrong. So let's try this one. Example number 5. What would you do if I give you 1 fifth x to the 4th equals 125? How do you get rid of that one-fifth? Do what? You could divide by one-fifth. I don't like dividing by a fraction because I'd like you to be able to do this without your calculator. So what's a little bit better way? Multiply by five. Multiply by five. Okay, I'm going to leave you there. So times by five on both sides, and then see if you can finish the problem, please. Okay, so things to the fourth power, right? What's one to the fourth? 
You guys with me? What's 2 to the 4th? 2 times 2 times 2 is 8 times another 2 is 16. We did 3 to the 4th earlier. What's that? 3 to the 4th. So 3 times 3 is 9. So here's how I do that one. I go 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 3 is 9. And what's 9 times 9? 81. Okay, so what about 4 to the 4th? You can go 4 times 4 is 16 and do another 16 and times 16 times 16. Or do you know 4 to the 3rd? 64, and you could times it by 4. Either of these will give you the same answer. Maybe this is easier if you, have, if you have, can't do it in your head. So that's 256. Okay? All right. I, I, there's a list of my fourths. Let's go back to the problem and see how big we need. What's 125 times 5? 625. Can you do that in your head? So let's talk about how you do that. 5 times 100 is 500. And then the other thing is 25 times 5. So it's like 5 quarters. How much is 5 quarters? 125, so 500 and 125 is 625, okay? I'm not saying you have to do that, but that mental math and thinking process does help you. And so it's not that idea to do what I'm doing there and then go ahead and double check the calculator on a quiz or a test. Okay, so we need to take the fourth root. So I'm going to raise this to the one-fourth power. So, Ryan, we've talked about how we can write it like that or with the fourth root, either way, okay? So I'm going to multiply this as to the first power. And I'm not big enough here, so let's go again. What's 5 times 5 times 5? What's 3 fives? 125. And what's 125 times 5? We just did that. Okay. So now what's the fourth root of 625? 5. five. Do you have a plus or a minus? Yes. Yes. Because you could do a negative times a negative times a negative times a negative and still get a positive. Okay? Okay, let's see. Um, do I have one more of this type? No. Yes. <laughs> nice try, Jenna. No. <laughs> okay, example number six. We got to try one with the parentheses, see if you guys can do this. 2x plus 4, not to the second power. Let's go third power. All right, let's try that one. Give it a shot. If you're not sure, make an effort anyways. Divide by two, what's the next move? Square root. Cube root. Nice job, Jenna. Nice job, Jenna. She wanted all the flip kids to hear that. Guys, when you divide by 2, because this is a times here, when you divide by 2, this just cancels off. And then you still have this left. Negative 216. Take the cube root. Do you know what multiplies to be 3 times itself to give you 216? That would be 6. 6 times 6 times 6 is 216. So this is x plus 4 equals negative 6, because a negative times a negative times a negative is a negative. Could it be positive 6 also? No. No, so that's the key here, right? Okay, now move your 4 over, so subtract 4, and you get negative 10.
Who got it right? Beautiful. Okay. Um, oh, I know what I wanted to show you. If you want to check this, and you don't have to check it for me, but you check it for you. Say you're on a test, you're not quite sure. All you have to do is fill in negative 10 here. So you could take your calculator. You wouldn't even have to write it out. Would everybody type that in? So all I did was put in my answer in where the X is. Quick check with the handy dandy calculator man. And what should you get out? Negative 432. If you don't, then you did something wrong. Okay, so it's a great way to check it. Okay, second type today. These are actually some of my favorites. This is called solving equations using same base. Solving equations using the same base. At the beginning of your in pre-calculus, we did some of these. So if you learned this this year, it helps you next year. You guys are in pre-cal. By the way, did everybody get me the signed forms for the math class for next year? Okay. Okay, so this looks like this. 4 to the x minus 1 equals 4 to the third. And this is a real basic one for us to start off with. First of all, it's very basic because both sides have a 4. That is called your base. Okay, the bases are the same. And if the bases are the same and they have to be equal, that would mean that exponents would have to be the same. So if over here it's 4 cubed, this would need to be 4 cubed. You with me? So they both would equal 64 here, and they're equal to each other. So could you, you could probably do this in your head. This exponent needs to be what? Four. <coughs> Listen to my question. Three. This exponent no. needs to be three. 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 What does x need to be for this to four. be three? Four. There you go. So x would have to be four. So what you're doing is just to find out what's missing so the two sides are equal. Kind of a common thing to do here as these get trickier. You went on this one. But as they get trickier, you'd make a little equation here, x minus 1 equals 3, and solve it. But you don't have to if, if you can see what to do. Okay. But on this next one, you might have to write out an equation. So let's say you have 3 to the 4x equals 3 to the 3 minus x. Did you guys try that one? Hopefully you learn how to solve the Okay, do you remember how to solve an equation like that? Hopefully. Okay, they have the same base, that's key. So if they have the same base, then 4x has to equal 3 minus x. That was a little harder to do in your head, don't you think? Okay. I can do my head because it comes out to a fraction. Okay, how do you solve this? What do you do? Add x, get the x's on one side. So that's 5x equals 3. Divide by 5, you get 3 fifths or 0.6 works also. Okay. How many people have that? Okay, a little higher level here. Example number 3. What's different about this one? What's different about that one? Yeah, they're not the same base. So the powers don't have to be the same if they're not the same base. So we have to get the bases the same. So you go to the smaller number. So I'm going to leave 5 to the x, but I'm going to rewrite 25 to be what? What's the same as 25? 5 squared. So I want to get them both so they have a 5. So the left side is good, already has a 5. The right side I have to change 25 to 5 squared. So what do I have now on the right side? Whoops, what do you do with these? Six. Multiply them. Multiply them. Power to a power, you multiply. Okay, what is x equal then? Very good. Okay. So let's check this. Let's make sure it's right. Would you guys type in your calculator, because it's kind of big, 5 to the 6th power 
And we're saying that should be the same as 25 to the third. What's 5 to the sixth? 625. Okay, now everybody type in 25 to the third, and we better get the same answer. Because we're saying, that we're saying if we put 6 in here, it gives us the same thing. Okay, so feel like, you know, check a few of them. Okay, let's see what you guys can do on this one. 64 to the 3x equals 4 to the 5th. same base first and then just replace the 64 with something. Just replace it. Are we good? Okay, what are you going to change 64 to? 4 to the 3rd, okay? Mary, is this the kind you were talking about? Kind of. So this is 4 to the 3rd, raised to the 3x, which is going to give you 4 to the what? 9x. You've got to multiply those. Okay, make sure you look and see that you don't have 6x there. Okay, 4 to the 5th. So now these two are equal, so you want to know what 9 times x equals 5, so x is what? 5 over 9. Do we do okay? Okay. Okay, try this one. Eight to the n minus one equals four. <coughs> as soon as someone figures out what's different about this one, let me know. So you have to change 8 to a new base and 4 to a new base, but the same base on both sides. What base am I talking about? What base? No, it has to be something. 
Something to a power will give you four. Something to a power will give you eight. Two. What's my base? Two. 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 Two to some power to be replaced four. Two to some power to replace eight. So you have to replace eight, you have to replace four, Joe. Let's see if you guys were able to figure this out. So this is 2 to the 3rd, replace the 8. 2 to the 2nd, replaces the 4. Okay, the big move here is, what do you do here? You have to distribute. So this is 3n minus 3. Check to see it's not 3n minus 1 there. Okay. And now they both have the base of 2, so now you can set these equal to each other. So 3n minus 3 equals 2. Move your 3 over. How much will that give us? 5 divided by 3 is 5 thirds. <coughs> okay, did anybody get that all the way? Nice. Nice. Okay, but this is a big idea here. You have to multiply those. You have to distribute that 3. Okay, um, a couple more, then we'll be done here. Actually, three more. That's a couple in somebody's long way of saying a couple. Number 6. Um, what's the twist here? There's a fraction, okay? We're going to do this one together, and then I'll have you do the next one. Okay, so what I have to notice is, what's the base that I want? What's the base I want? 3. Okay, this already has a 3. So over here, I'm going to write 9 as 3 to what power? So, to get 9, 3 to the second. Okay, then, for me to use the idea of the same bases and the exponents being equal, they both have to be on top. So we need to move this up. So it gives us 3 to the negative second, so n is just negative 2. Which, could you have figured out this easy one maybe in your head? 3 to what power gives you 1, 9? <coughs> you might as well do it just in your head. That would be fine. As you get harder, you won't be able to do that. Okay? Okay, you guys try this one. Same idea, a little trickier. 7 to the n plus 3 <coughs> equals 1 over 49. If you think you can do it in your head, try it in your head, but then see if you can show me the steps, too. Okay, so I'm going to show you my thought process if I wanted to be Parker and not showing steps. Parker's really good at showing steps, but he likes it without showing steps, which I appreciate. It's good. Okay? But then he can go back and show me, too. Okay, so my thought process without steps is I know it takes two sevens to get this, and it's on the bottom, so that'd be seven and negative second. So I need this to be seven to the negative second. So I need n plus three to get to negative two, so I need extra negatives, two extra negatives, and make this negative one. What plus 3 would be two extra negatives? Negative 5. Negative 5 and 3 would be negative 2. So I could do it in my head. My answer should be negative 5. Did you guys get negative 5? Yeah. Okay, so let me show you the steps so you should be able to get that. So a lot of people say, oh, I have to show steps. Well, yeah, you have to show me what you're, what you're doing. But it's not bad to do it without the steps first. Okay, so I'm going to move this up. Is everybody okay if I do, I know it's 7 squared and move it up at once? You get 7 negative second. Okay, then I'm going to take this and set it equal to this. So n plus 3 equals negative 2. Subtract 3, subtract 3. I get n is negative 5. Booyah. Okay. How, who said they got that one right? Okay, good. Okay, last one. Let's see if you can do this one a little trickier. What am I on? 8 or 9 or 20? 8. 
All right, let's go with 5 to the 2x equals square root of 125. Aha! You're going to want to change that square root into rational form. Parker, do the problem, please. That would be right, Parker, if it was just a five inside. Okay, so 5 is the base, right? 125 is 5 cubed. Okay, you got to deal with the square root. What's the fractional um, power that we can associate with the square root? 1 half. That's what I was trying to get at. Okay? All right, so you have 5 cubed raised to the 1 half. What do you do with your exponents here? Multiply. Multiply. So this is 5 to the 2x equals 5 to what's 3 times a half? 3 halves. 3 halves. Okay? And then you write 2x equals 3 halves. I'd recommend you don't divide by 2 because you don't a fraction divided by a number, so times by a half. And then you don't need a calculator here. Multiply straight across, and you get 3 fourths. Okay? A lot of you left off this 3 here, and it was 125 inside there, so you have to have that 5 to the third. Okay? All righty. Um, I don't know if you guys know Ryan or not, but Ryan helps me in my flip class a lot, so he happens to be available now to help. So what's great is it's hard for me to get around to everybody while you guys are working. So he has an answer key also, and he'll mark correct on them if he sees them or give you some guidance if you mess up. Okay? Can I get everybody to do this for me? These are numbered down this way, but so we can... Oh, actually, it doesn't matter because we have the answer, so we can go through way more. You should have on that one now? So if it has a yeah. that'd be a fractional power. Yes. Yeah. 